Hello fellow gamers, welcome back to another episode of The Hunting Guide. You are here with Keldal, and if you've been watching, uh, we've been uh, going through and hunting various large monsters uh, throughout Monster Hunter 3 Ultimate, and next on our list is the Royal Ludron. And so now you may have noticed if you've uh, watched my previous episode, I'm going to be bringing with me a different sword. Um, this one does actually kind of look like a great sword because of its size, but this is still a long sword, so this is called the Chain Slaughter. It's like a chainsaw type thing, um, kind of interesting look to it. Um, and it does do uh, thunder damage. And so let's go ahead and take a look at our uh, information on the website. Alright, so here is Royal Ludroth's page on kiranaiko.com. So Royal Ludroth used their sponge-like neck scales to absorb water and prevent drying out on land. Once the sponge loses moisture, they attempt to re-enter the water. They also spew mucus to trip up their prey. So take a look at their damage chart. So you can hit their head, belly, and mane. Those are kind of their weakest points. You can see you do the most damage um, there as opposed to uh, their middle section or their back um, or their legs and tail section. And then you can see their resistances there. Uh, so weakest to fire, kind of nothing to uh, water. A little bit weak to thunder, ice, and then not so much dragon. Here's the tolerances. Um, so pretty weak to uh, dizzy, kind of normal for all the rest of them. The different maps and areas that it will go to, sizes. And looking at the carves, this is actually going to be the first one where you'll see a carved body and also a carved tail. So you can actually cut the tail off and carve that as well um, to get some other items. So we will be trying to do that during this mission as well so that way you can get, take a look at uh, how you can do that. And the capture and the wound so you can wound its head and its sponge. So wail on that enough and you'll end up breaking them, increasing the chance to drop these items here. And of course some shiny drops as well and the quest that it's in. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, head on back into the game and check out Royal Ludroth. So let's grab some food here. We'll get the water bearer one, since Royal Ludroth does do water damage. Health stamina, defense, medic, and water bearer. All right. So I've got Medic, speeds up health recovery, antidote herb, and bitter bug success rates become 100%. And Water Bearer boosts water resistance. So now my water is at resistance 13, which is pretty nice for fighting Royal Loot Droth. All right, so we are on the Flooded Forest. This is actually one of my least favorite maps. Um, it just gets kind of annoying sometimes to move around with all the water that's around. Um, so, eh, I mean, it's okay. Grab all our items here. So we've got a Null Berry, uh, which it gives us here, so we can cure Elemental Blights for Fire, Water, Ice, Thunder, and Dragon. Um, so if you get hit by some of his water attacks and you get that on, you can use that to cure that. Um, the mini oxygen supply, so when we're underwater, if you're in a bind and can't get air fast enough, you can use those oxygen supplies. Uh, to be honest, I never really ever need to use them. Um, you can usually find the time uh, to end up getting to some of the bubbles that are underneath the water and get up to the surface. So, I mean, whatever. Um, and a poison knife gives us five poison knives, so I'll probably end up using these because these are supply items. Um, so I'll lose them at the end of the mission. So I'll try and put some uh, poison damage on uh, Royal Ludroth. So we can see he just moved to area two there. So we'll go ahead and run on over there and start up the fight. Doing a dance cha cha. 
I think he's gonna give me attack up. There we go. All right, let's go. All right, so here is Royal Ludra. So he kind of looks like a giant water lion almost. Um, and so there's his main area, this big spongy area right here. He's gonna do a roll attack. So that's one of his big attacks um, that he can end up doing. So you want to kind of look at that. Um, he'll shake his mane like that um, right before he does that roll. So you kind of want to get off to the side. Um, he shoots water balls out like that. And um, they'll kind of stay in that area. So if you end up running through there, you can still end up getting that water blight. So this is his other kind of big attack that he ends up doing. He'll actually run. He can do that uh, multiple times in a succession and shoot out um, water along the side there. Um, so generally I end up just kind of staying out of this way um, because if you get hit by his body as he's charging through um, You can take damage like all those guys are right now um, And you can get hit by those water balls So when I first start finding out on um, Royal Ludroth, I usually end up focusing on the tail you may have uh, Remembered from the damage chart that is actually one of the um, lower damaged areas But you can also end up cutting his tail off um, so doing damage to the tail section right around where I was hitting um, is a good spot to hit him. It's also a good spot to kind of hang out um, because you can easily dodge some of his um, bigger attacks from that area. So like his roll attack, you can kind of hang out in the back here and then come in right afterwards and get a couple hits on him there. All right, so there he's gonna do the water charge and a couple quick bursts here. And another roll and run up and hit his tail. And dodge forward to get out of his way. And keep rolling behind him. All right, so let's see, where is he? Charge forward this way and do a roll. So again, run up to his tail, get a couple slices on him, and he's gonna spit some water. Do another roll. I'm safe where I am right now. So again, you can see I didn't even really have to move when he did that barrel roll. Didn't even hit me. That was in a spot where I was able to hit his tail a couple good times. Roll, get up there. Again, completely clear of that roll over by his tail. Oh, roll forward so I don't get hit by that. There we go. Alright. Looks like he's moving to another area now. Right, let's get him out of that entry area. It's really annoying to end up fighting large monsters um, right in those kind of zone sections. You can get hit and get pushed into the other zone and then you're going back and forth between them. So it's usually better to end up pulling them out into these uh, more open areas. All right, so I've got these blue drops here. So I'm gonna go ahead and use my charge attack. See if I can get that off on him. There we go. Charge up my weapon a little bit. Let him finish out this attack as he's running back and forth. He's going for a third run. And usually that's about it for that. There we go. Comes up to the stop and get a couple kicks on him. Pretty much with Ludroth, I try to stay out from right in front of him. He's doing a tail swipe there. Kind of curls up really quickly and then uh, does a tail swipe. I usually end up backing off um, pretty quickly, especially if I'm in that tail section right next to that. 
let him finish this up. There we go. Yeah, nope, he's doing it again. And big lunge right there. So when he does that lunge, it's kind of, um, especially if you're going for the tail section, it's kind of deceiving where that tail is going to end up being because he's still kind of to the side. Um, but right after he finishes that animation, his tail comes like right behind basically where he lunged from. So he's still going to be facing in that direction when he finishes that up. Um, so keep that in mind. Um, so that way you're not, you know, wasting a bunch of time trying to positioning yourself. Um, so you can see he did it there again there. Um, his tail goes right out to the side and then comes right back to face uh, the direction that he lunged from. So that way you can kind of get yourself positioned up a little bit better. Right. Let's see if I can get this off on him. Nope. He leaped over me. And now we get to see some underwater fighting as he moves into Area 3. So Area 3 on this map is completely underwater. Not fun to deal with at all. I'm going to go ahead and eat these rations. Um, and leave it on my first aid bed. Alright, so now we are underwater. So he's resting right now. He's kind of curled up in a ball over there trying to recover up some of his health. Um, these bubbles right here, these will fill up your oxygen. You can see the oxygen up in the top uh, left corner right there. Alright. So I really don't like fighting underwater. Um, it's much harder to gauge um, where you're going to be hitting. Um, so especially if you're trying to, you know, specifically cut off the tail area. There we go. Cut it off right there. It's kind of hard to um, judge the direction that you're doing. Alright, so I cut his tail off so you can see it's not on him anymore. You end up getting a carve from it. I'm going to get hit by that. Probably wasn't the best time to carve that. So that gives you that extra carve. Um, you can get special items from that that you can maybe only get from tail carves and, and that sort of thing. So definitely kind of look that up online if you need a certain item for crafting and that sort of thing. It looks like we're going back on land. So at this point with Lo Royal Ludroth, uh, once I've gotten the tail carve, I'm going to end up focusing more on his sponge and try and get that broken. And... The supply chest gave me those poison knives, so let's go ahead and hit him with those. So when you end up using poison, um, you usually have to hit um, the monster kind of in quick succession with that um, to end up getting the effect. So there we go, I hit him twice, still not on him. Let's hit him a couple more times. And there we go, now he is poisoned. So you can see around his head section, you see those purple bubbles going up, so that lets you know that the poison took effect. So he's going to take some slow damage over time there. Alright, and he's going back in the water now. Um, so his sponge is pretty much dry. Um, you may notice it's a little bit not as thick as it was when he kind of first started. Um, and when he does some of his water attacks, it ends up not spitting out that water ball. Um, so that's how you can know where he's kind of getting uh, low on stamina. He's used up a lot of his... You know, I guess water attacks from his sponge um, and he ends up wasting a lot of time trying to spit out those uh, water attacks and you can get some pretty good hits out on him so if you know that he's pretty much dried out and he doesn't have that water in him um, you can look out for those water attacks and get some pretty good hits and you know even right up close on his head all right so again gonna try and focus on hitting his mane so that's one of his attacks that um, he does there. Um, quite a few of the uh, underwater monsters does that type of attack where they kind of 
sidestep to the side there and uh, then lunge forward. So best way to avoid that is just kind of um, dodge to the side um, when you see them end up doing that sidestep and uh, hopefully you'll end up kind of getting out of that direction. Um, so there's a tail swipe there. He does it right um, off in this front kind of direction. Again, Ludroth is um, very focused to uh, frontal attacks, so staying in front of him is pretty dangerous. Getting to the side, wailing on the sponge here is going to be uh, pretty good for doing the amount of damage that you need to do. Let's get down a little bit so my camera's not going in and out of the water. Alright. And let's see if I can get my combo off right in his face. There we go. Charged up a little bit. And there's a limping underwater. So he would be good to capture um, at this point. So you can't use pitfall traps underwater, but you can use the shock traps. So if I wanted to capture him, I would be able to put a shock trap down here, get him in here, and then hit him with the trank bombs to capture him. But again, I just want to kill him, so I'm going to keep focusing on that main and see if I can end up breaking that so that way I can get the bonus reward for that. boost there. And I'm stunned. Let's go ahead and use this mini whetstone, sharpen my blade up a little bit. I'm bouncing off him a lot. And follow him to the next area. Alright, so he is going to area 8. So area 8 is one of the areas that he'll actually end up sleeping, and he'll sleep on land. Um, so I'm going to hang out here for just a minute and wait for him to end up leaping out of there. Since I've got that auto tracker on him, or if you even have a paintball, you can see exactly where he is in there. So I'm watching him go up there, and he's about to leap on land right now. Alright, and he's going to start going to sleep. So, yeah, he's going to go to sleep, and he's going to end up recovering a little bit of his health. But he's also going to go to sleep, and he's going to be basically in one stationary spot. He's also not in the water, which, of course, I do not like him. Actually, I might have came in here a little bit early. No, he's coming back in the water. Okay. Well, there goes that plan. So normally he'll come up here, and right over here in this area near this nest area, he'll actually curl up and go to sleep. Um, and so you can end up positioning yourself right on his head or his mane, wherever you want to hit him. Um, get a, quite a few hits off on him um, before he'll end up coming out. Let's see if I can get him back out here. coming over here. Hanging out in the water still. We're fighting right at the surface, which is kind of annoying. Because the camera angles get all wonky. You end up seeing the surface of the water quite a bit. Alright, so there we go. I broke his mane, so you can see the change in the textures. Um, looks all broken and messed up. Uh, so that's what it looks like if you broke his mane. And I don't think I've broken his head yet good look at that. And so it dropped a shiny um, object. So most of the time when you end up breaking his main, um, you'll have a chance for um, a shiny drop. And it'll just um, add to the amount of things that you can get. So let's see if I can pick that up right here. Looks like he's... 
Alright, so I got a Wyvern tier. It's just gonna give me a little extra money at the end of the mission there. Extra money is always good. All right, and that finishes off Royal Ludra. Go over here and get my body carves. All right, so that was Royal Ludroff. So you got to see uh, the cutoff tail and also the wounded sponge. Um, get an idea of what that looks like in case you're trying to get those drops as well. Um, when you're cutting off a tail, you definitely want to use an item that's going to be doing slashing damage, like a sword. Um, or if you're using a bow gun, you can use those slicing shots and stuff like that. Um, if you're using a hammer or horn or something like that, that's going to do um, kind of that blunt damage. Uh, you're not going to be able to cut that tail off. Um, you're just going to end up, you know, just doing damage to it and you're going to kill it before that tail ends up actually getting cut off. Um, so keep that in mind. Um, grab up a sword if, you know, you normally use a hammer or something like that if you want to get some of those tail drops. And um, I hope you uh, learned a little something about hunting Royal Ludroth, and we'll catch you next time on the next hunt. Thanks for watching.